Are you using the power of properly placed stealth? Don Skaggs again with Empowered Inventing TV where we try to help you help other people by taking your great innovation, the right opportunity, mixing that with sound wisdom so you, no not someone else, you can turn them into real things like products and businesses that actually make money. Now today I want to talk to you a little bit about the power of properly placed stealth. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I'm talking about IP that's strategically placed and others, well, not just IP, IP and other strategies that are strategically placed to make you hidden enough from harmful people, because there's harmful people out there, that yet still getting the word out uh, to as many potential customers as possible. So, uh, so many inventors and entrepreneurs I see out there are completely all hung up on IP and getting their ideas stolen and they don't take the time to find that right strategy to drop the worry and move forward and actually get any kind of traction. They always stay stuck usually of, well, oh, Don, I don't know, I just, I just have to stay right here because I, somebody's going to steal this, I just know it. By the way, I never had a, a, a product stolen that wasn't already in the marketplace selling a lot first, by the way, but before that no one cared. Um, but uh, but yeah. uh, we, we do, we get kind of all hung up in that and hung up in that dilemma of, of, of you know, someone's going to steal my idea. But at the same time, I want to get my idea out there. And because if you don't, if you're so hung up on someone stealing your idea and you don't get it out there, no one's going to know it exists and nobody's going to buy it, nobody's going to license it, nothing's going to happen. So, you, 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 if you're one of those people that are just not taking time to find the right strategy to drop the worry and move forward with traction, then you're going to want to hear what I have to say next. So, uh, you, you hear of companies that uh, say, oh, we're in stealth mode on this product. And that's all well and good if they're doing development and all that. Uh, and they're not letting their product, you know, no, anyone know about their product. They just say, oh yeah, we're in stealth mode. That's, that's where stealth comes from. Well, I'm talking about a, a strategically placed stealth that can help the small inventor, the small, maybe they've got plenty of money to run on some other company that says they're in stealth mode. Maybe they got all this money that they can just run on and burn uh, because they, uh, they, they know they're not going to launch until, you know, two, three years from now. And that's fine for them. But that's probably not you. You are probably, what, what if you need cash flow like sooner than later? What if you need to sell or license product? Uh, what then? That, that, that's what gets you caught in the dilemma of, oh, well, somebody's going to steal it. Oh, but I need to sell it. Oh, but somebody's going to steal it. And you just keep doing that back and forth, and you're, you you feel like you're stuck. You're you're on the hamster wheel, and I, I want to make this a hashtag. Sometimes get off the hamster wheel. Hashtag get off the hamster wheel. So somebody somebody put that out there. Um, but so it, you you need that. So I want to talk to you about a lean IP strategy, utilizing what's called the provisional patent application. If you're not familiar with that, we teach that. We have courses on that. We have uh, we, we we talk about that a lot at the Inventors Network uh, in our in our workshops. But you want to utilize this PPA, this provisional patent application. Um, and, and when you do that, when you, when you can file this, and, and it's easy to do, it's not hard, it's not difficult, it's not expensive if you do it right, and you can place patent pending on anything then, once you have that filed. And you want to place it on everything. You want that to be your scary beware dog sign, saying, oh, but Don, what is, you know, I could have that, but somebody could still steal it. Yeah, yeah, bad people can do bad things. Uh, so that's it, it, a scary boy or a dog sign is a scary boy or a dog sign. 
the person walking past your house that's wanting to rob one of the houses, go and break in and be a burglar, well, they might pass your house by if they see a scary beware dog sign in the yard. They might go to one that doesn't have one of those. And that's what serves the purpose. Does that mean they, it will keep anyone from breaking in? No. You can have the best security system known to man, but if somebody's got a bulldozer big enough and they want your stuff bad enough, they'll come knock down one of your walls, go in and steal all your stuff. Uh, the patents, laws, security systems, all that, none of it is foolproof, so you have to be able to mitigate that risk. That's what I'm talking about. Have a lean patent strategy and then use that to mitigate your risks. Don't just fly out I don't know, open ended and, and, and get yourself hurt without any kind of protection. But at the same time, don't let the fear lock you in. Never let fear make a decision for you. Uh, so so uh, utilize this. Put that scary book. I used to have this line at the bottom of all my literature. All patent, all, all products from US Biotechs Corporation are fully protected under patent and trademark law. And I just, I made that up to sound really, really scary. Now, were they? Yes. They were all uh, protected under that. But I said that to, just to make it sound scarier than just patent pending. Um, so, um, so anyway, uh, so we'll these measures totally prevent break-ins? No, of course not. But it's a deterrent. It's not a force field. Your patent does not come with a force field. I got a video on that. Look it up. Uh, trade secrets are also a really, really good. If you can hide the salt and pepper, the formula, the secret sauce to how it works where they can't like reverse engineer it very, very well, and usually these pe copycat people are lazy anyway. They never could figure out my formulas. We had a lot of chemical products, and they, 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 try as they may, they were not. And then some of them were really a lot bigger than us. Could not figure it out. Mostly, uh, you know, if it's not doing big numbers, again, nobody's really going to care. If you're doing a million dollars on Kickstarter, yeah, you're going to you're going to raise the attention of some people. And that being said, you know, maybe you don't want to use Kickstarter or Amazon right out the gate. Maybe you, well, you're in product testing mode. You're doing that minimum viable product and you're saying, okay, they like this, they don't like that, let's modify this a little bit. And before you get it out there, if you're wanting to just test to see if it's going to be a good, a good model, a good product, utilize small venues, small shows, small fairs. State fairs, uh, those that we've done this before, we've had innovation centers at state fairs and other trade shows, and and in not where the entire world, international world, is got eyeballs watching for a product to take off. So so you can utilize those things, small fairs, small venues, small shows, even local ones, you know, with just a few hundred people can give you some really really valuable data. Uh, so, uh, so you know that's that's where you want to do. And if it's a place where you can actually sell products, you can test it and refine it with real customers. Because if money changes hands, it will be an absolute true yes on if it's a good idea or not. People can tell you it's a good idea, but if they're if they're saying yes with dollar bills, those are the true yeses. No matter what you do. Nothing will keep bad people from doing bad things. I've said this a lot, especially the last couple of videos, but it's very true. So no law, no patent, no strategy are going to keep these bozos from doing what they do. But you can stay one step ahead of them, either in the development or, again, some of these stealth things. So you can be first to market, and you can always be first to market because while these lazy people are trying to copy your first, the first one you had, you're already working on the, the new and improved model, and you're going to be one step ahead of them like that. I know that. It's true. I've done it. It works. Um, so you can always stay one step ahead of them, and they wouldn't be copying you, by the way, if they could create their own thing that would be a winner themselves. So keep that in mind. So what's your IP stealth strategy? And is what you're doing holding you back from pushing you forward? Let me know in the comments. 
and if you're looking for more, then you want to check out our Empowered Inventing Academy course called Protecting What's Valuable, and that's available now at empoweredinventing.com. I'm Don Skaggs. This is Empowered Inventing TV. Like, subscribe, help us to build our tribe, and I will look to see you at the next meeting, workshop, online course, or on the next video.